Hi there, my name is Richard Horsman. I'm going to show you around version 1.20 of Richie Ho's Rack Planner, which is a program I've got in development at the moment. It's not available yet, but this is more of a progress update. I'm going to include a lot of the information that you may already have seen on other YouTube videos, but I just want to have it all in one place for those that are interested. So as you look at the screen, you'll notice there's a menu bar across the top, and we're going to use one of those menus there to add in a new rack. We get the option of choosing a format. So we've got 5U, Buchla, Euro, Frac, Modcan, all, you know, basically everything you could want here at the moment. So I'm going to choose Euro and it's 84 HP wide and we're going to have one row. So in it goes, there's our rack. You can see the rails in the rack and there's a pair of feet on there and everything. So it's ready to go. If we click on options now, there's a few things we can change about the rack. We can change the border thickness, we can decide whether we're going to show the rack feet or not, show a shadow around it, whether the rack's locked on the screen in relation to the other racks, whether racks are allowed to overlap, whether they've got rounded corners. Um, we can show rack information to the right that includes the number of modules, the amount of HP used, the amount of current taken by the modules, uh, whether we've got curved cables, whether we're going to show screws, show the rails, show the holes, everything here is customizable so you can really build a rack how you want. So for now, I'm just going to turn, no, let's, let's leave it as it is for now. Let's get some modules in there before we start playing around. So we click on Add Module. We've got the format list at the left-hand side. It's already pre-selected on Euro. And then we've got a list of all of the uh, Euro manufacturers that, uh, that I've got on my system. So we go all the way from 4MS at the top to WMD at the bottom. So let's pick a WMD because he's down at the bottom. And there's a list of all the WMD modules. Now, if we hover the mouse over for more than about half a second on one of these, let's take the gamma wave source, we'll get a preview of that module. There it is, so you can make sure you're picking the right thing. And then go down Geiger counter. Anything in here should give a nice preview. So for now, after we've been through a few of those, let's take the gamma wave source. And when I clicked on that and click away, it's automatically been added to the rack. If I wanted to add a load of WMD stuff in, it's really quick. I don't have to keep going through this menu every time. I can just go WMD. I'm going to have a, a what should we have? Geiger counter, an audio expansion, CV expansion, filter, and an input offset module. I picked all of those, and they've all gone in one after another on the rack next in the next available space. So I'm going to select a few of these and take them out again. Let's see, I can right click on these to select them, and click on delete modules. That's cleared my rack out. Let's add in some stuff from. IntelliGel, let's put the Rubicon in there with a Spock and a flip-flop and a pair of Dixies. So it's that quick and easy to add them. What you notice when I start dragging these modules around the rack is that you get the numbers appearing to the left and right, which shows how many HP you got to the left, how many you got to the right, so it makes it really easy to put them where you want. If I want to position this Dixie here, 4 HP from the right, there's no messing about. Just wait till the number 4 is there and then let go. What you'll notice is there's a green rectangle underneath that shows that there's enough room for it to fit. So if I was to put it on top of the other one, it goes red. We need 4 HP, we've only allowed 3, so therefore it won't fit. And if I let go of it, it's going to snap to the nearest available space. So if I drop it on the other side slightly, it jumps to the left, jumps to the right. There's a song in that somewhere. Anyway, so they're really easy to line up now. You just drop them on top of each other and they snap into position. What we can do is we can cable between modules as well. So if you want to get some rack, sto uh, some rack storage, some patch storage going on, I can hold down the control key. I get a nice crosshair, which I can zero in over one of the sockets and I can drag it around and put it wherever I want. So there's one. Let's have one from over here. Pay no attention to what I'm connecting to what. It really doesn't make any difference for the sake of this demo. So I'm just going to get a few patch leads on the screen. They're just random colours at the moment. Well, randomly picked from a selection of decent colours. So I'll do one more for luck. Oh, that's a big one. Let's put him up there. Okay, so these are all now patched together. You can see that. Uh, when I move the modules around, the patch cords stay connected. So I grab this guy here and move him. The patch cords stay nicely connected. Even if I pull him off here, put him back on, reorder them, whichever way you want. The patch cables are going to sort themselves out. Now you remember there was an option I just showed earlier on that, that gives you 
curved patch cables. If I go back into options, you'll see curved cables is selected. If I deselect that and say OK, we get straight patch cables, which was uh, a request from Monobase on MUFs. So instead of having the curved lines, we now have straight lines. But I like curved lines, so they're going back on again. Say OK to that. Right, if we zoom in on here, you'll see that there's some screws at the top of each module. When you take the module out, the screws disappear. When you drop it back in, the screws reappear. There's an option there to get rid of the screws. There, they've all gone now, but I like the screws, so they're coming back on again. What other options can I show you? Show rails and show holes. Well, if I turn show holes off, the little HP holes at the top and bottom disappear. You might want them, you might not. And the other thing is to turn rails off, the rails disappear. So really we're going into a, a very minimalist look now, but it still works in exactly the same way. It's still functional. It just hasn't got the eye candy on there. So while we're messing about with eye candy, let's turn off the rack feet and the rack shadows. Let's have a look at that. So we're getting even simpler still. Where's the edge of my rack? There it is. And for one last thing to do is to take the border thickness right down to, let's say, two and turn off the rounded corners. And we're really on about as basic as we can get now. If, if, if you want clarity, there's clarity. But for me, it's about, all about bells and whistles as well. So I'm going to stick them all back on again. OK. Oh, there's a little option here, rack info. I'm going to turn that on. You see that to the edge of the rack, five modules used. 26 milliamps of power. That might not be the correct number because I don't know if I've put in the power requirements for all of these modules yet. Let's have a look. No, I haven't. The one's in red there. I haven't got the power info for yet, but I will have soon. So yeah, you can see the power used and total rack space, how much you've used and what you've got left. So let's jolly this rack up again. Uh, let's put him up to I don't know, 14 will do. Okay, so let's add another rack in now. We'll do one of those little beauty cases, whatever they're called. So I think they're 32 HP wide. But just to show you this thing's flexible, we're going to put it in at 33 HP. Add a rack. Well, there he is. There's our new rack. You saw he pushed the other one out of the way. They're designed so that when you overlap, they move out of the way. I'm just going to turn that rack info off by pressing I on the keyboard. That's the other way you can get to these options. Press I. So let's try that again. There they are pushing each other out of the way. If you wanted to line these up, you can draw a rectangle around them and they'll line up to the right, or presumably they'll line up to the left, I forget. Yes, they do. So you can stack them neatly if you want. But for now, he's going there. Just to, This is just to demonstrate that we can move these uh, modules with their cables into a new rack. And when we move the new rack around, everything keeps nicely updated. Okay, so that's that's the uh, Euro rack side of things. Let's add another module, another rack in here. Let's put in a Buchla rack. Four modules wide, one row. In he comes. He's pushed everything out of the way again. I'm just going to zoom out a bit so we can see him better. Let's add in Buchla. What should we have? Two five nine twisted. There he is. He's gone in. So again, the, again, you can see the uh, previews coming up on the right-hand side. Let's have a bit of that random in there. And nice big one, have you? So we've got some, we've got two different formats now. We've got Euro and the Buchla format, and they work nicely together. We can't drag, obviously, from here into a Euro rack. That will not work, and vice versa. So just in case you <laughs> I'm going to try something like that. But what we can do is we can patch from one to the other. In reality, I know that's a banana socket and I know that's a 3.5 mil socket, but this is just for the sake of the demo. So as I move that one around, or move the whole of the Buchla rack around, that's not the whole of the Buchla rack, that is, you can see the patch leads are moving. If you grab a desktop, everything moves. Grab the edge of a rack, the rack moves. Grab a free space, the rack moves. Or grab a module, and the module moves. Right, what should we do next? Let's have a look at this. We can take a look at the uh, cut, copy and paste. So let's put another module in. We're going to have Cyclebox 2. 
In any case, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Can move these guys up to the end so they're out of the way. Right, if I right click on him to select him, if I press X, that's a cut. If I press V, that's a paste. And again, and again, and again. If I press it again, even though there's no more room for cycle boxes, they'll start to pile up on the left hand side. And so you can see it's gone yellow there. We've got can't move it from there until we turn free drop on and we can put it where we like. But I'm just going to delete him. There we go. Cut, copy and paste only currently works on single modules. But I may change that, I might not. Delete those so we can still paste in. If we want to click quickly clear a rack, we can hit clear rack at the top. And once a rack's been cleared, we can delete a rack, so we can very quickly wipe these out. I'm going to leave that on for now. So now I'm going to show you the next big thing that's coming to this. If we zoom in and we add a bubble sound ULFO, what you can see here is we've got some overlays for the knobs. Zoom in a bit more. So click on that. I can set it to any position. Same with, same with all of them. These overlays will be stored as part of the plan file. So once you've set the positions of these knobs up, you can save them with your patches. So not only will you have your patch leads, you'll also have your knob positions and ultimately the switch positions and any other buttons, they'll all be handled with these overlays. So I'm just going to add another one of these in. Let's use copy and paste, C and then V. In it goes. So I've got two ULFOs. If I now let's show you another thing, if I hold down the control key to patch between these, I've already mapped out the positions of the sockets. So when I hold down control, you'll see that they're all highlighted in green, which means that when I go near them, all my cables are now going to snap directly to these holes. You can still draw to somewhere that hasn't got a patch cable if you wanted to, but that these snap points make things much, much easier to patch up. Also, you can snap to existing patch points as well, so even if you put one in the middle of nowhere, you can still snap to that. And then when you move the module as before, everything updates. So we've now got patch cables showing what's routed where. We've got overlays showing the uh, control states all saved within your plan file. So you can use this as a standard modular planner to build up your rack and decide where you're going in the future. And you can also use it to create small versions of patches, you know, just subsets of your modules and detailed patches to go up on muffs or wherever you wanna, you wanna show them off. So I think this, is, this will be fun. And it'll be a fair, fair amount of work to get this all working properly, but I think it'll absolutely be worth it. Right, one last thing to show you. I'm going to load in another plan here. Um, I'm going to load in something more complex. Okay, so this is my current setup at home. And what you can do, if you wanted to know where, I'm just going to zoom in on one part of the rack. I'll tell you what, I'll get rid of the other racks as well, just so we're not cluttering everything up with all of this stuff. Just deleting these racks. So we can concentrate on this main one here. So as you can see, there's, there's modules there from several manufacturers for WMD, IntelliGel, 4MS. You know, they're, they're all in here. So what if you wanted to see all the, I don't know, the uh, Dirtfo modules? What you can do is you can press Highlight Manufacturer. So what I do is I highlight one of the modules by right-clicking on it and then press M on the keyboard. That highlights all of the modules from the same manufacturer. Press it again, it deselects everything. So WMD, I've got quite a few of those. Press M, it highlights them all. Press M again, gets rid of them. The other, th other short key we've got, shortcut key, is if we highlight something like that, that's 4HP wide, if I press W on the keyboard, I get all the other 4HP modules. Press it again, they all get deselected. 
And I think that's it for now. There'll be more updates soon, but uh, if you want any more information, drop a comment either on the YouTube link here or on Muffs. There's a, there's a thread there on Muffs, and there's also a Facebook page. If you do a search on Facebook for Richie Ho's Rack Planner, it's only just been set up, so there's not much on there yet. But if you go on there and like it, you'll see, uh, you'll see all the updates as they happen. Thank you very much for watching.